To set up your PS total station in Magnet Field, simply go to Configure and Survey. This is where your global settings for your GPS and optical configurations reside. I can see in my optical, there's a number of default settings in here. And if I press the button to the right, I can go in and I can edit an existing one or I can create a new one. So in this instance, I'm going to actually add a new configuration and I'm going to call it something that has some meaning to me. So it's my PS total station. It's going to be connected to my RC5 and it's a robotic setup. So I now hit next. It's a Topcon PS and if I go down and select PS from my model, I can now add a peripheral if I want to. So you can have a depth sounder connected to these. In this instance, I'm not going to worry about setting that up. So next. Now this is a setting that often confuses people. So the connection from my data collector can either be directly to my total station, which is Bluetooth total station. That means I won't go through my RC5. I'll have about a 300 meter range and I won't have any quick lock functions through the RC5. I will have the hybrid search function. I will have the find me here function on the map screen. So Bluetooth total station is the data collector directly to the PS and RC Bluetooth is the data collector to the RC5 and the RC5 then will talk to the total station. This will give you a range of about 600 metres or up to 600 metres and it will give you the added advantage of the quick lock function through the RC5. You can then have the RC handle attached, that's the black handle with a button on it for your sliding mini prism and you can uh, press that button to record points if you want to. Very handy for concrete set out and things like that. Next. My search track configuration, if you're ever unsure what you're setting, the title will give it away for you. So my searching and my tracking. These are definitely options which you can customise depending on your application. So if you're on a nice flat uh, plane, you don't need a huge vertical search area and you can massage those depending on your application. Same with turning speed. I like to have mine at 32, purely preference based on your application. My survey settings, so typically for me in robotic mode, I just have a direct reading rather than direct and reverse, but you can have either. And I would have my tolerances set up, horizontal and vertical angles, and my distance. I'm going to leave the defaults in this instance. The measurement type that I want to read, and my target types can all be customised. My prisms can be customised. So typically for me, I would use my APT1, which is the prism that comes with the PS. And for a back sight, I'd have a zero offset back sight. I'd also turn my guide lights on because I find them very handy, the red and green guide lights on the PS. My auto topo interval is set up through here as well. Uh, and I can change the interval in the, uh, in the bar there and I might want to have a 10 second interval. Hit the next button. My survey settings for my EDM. So again, these are customizable. My precise button in my topo screen, I might want to change that to an average of three and an auto store. And my quick, typically for my routines, I'd leave that in tracking to get the fastest EDM possible. If I do want an accurate reading, I can always hit the button next to it to get a precise reading. My stake settings, now in stake settings, the magnet button hides a, uh, another option here for how you're displaying your stake points. So the icon that you have and the color of that icon as well. So you can change that if need be, or if you don't want an icon, you can untick that as well. So the screen orientations and display references will be uh, uh, how you're driven to the point and depending on what you've got selected will give you different options for those references. Turning the total station to the design point, typically as a robotic I leave this as none, so I'm just constantly tracking and I'm being driven to the point, but you can have it automatically turned to the point uh, if you have an application that requires that. Point guide, as I said, I'm going to leave that on so I can see my red and uh, green light uh, as a reference to the total station. State grade marking, so 
you can fill out the uh, items on the right hand side to match the icon on the left and that will give you some consistency in marking off your stakes for your cut and fill. My stake settings, again you can alter these depending on your application but certainly in quick mode I would typically have that as tracking and then in fine as auto store and depending on what average you want. Stake settings, how the point is stored, completely customizable whether you want suffix prefixes, uh, add a constant, add a range and any notes you want with that point. What's displayed for your total station setup. So the default here is pretty good. You may want to look at, uh, depending on the user, uh, automatically display your back sites if you're working with a lot of back sites on a, on a project. Uh, but there's a range of options there. You can have ticked on or off and it's purely user preference. Once you're happy with the setup, green tick. I now have that setup available to me in my optical configuration. I know that this setup means I'm going to connect to my RC5 and not directly to my total station because of the naming convention I've used. Because I have two configurations in here, a GPS and an optical, I can also use my hybrid positioning uh, and that's a topic we can go through on another video but a great feature that allows you to connect to both instruments simultaneously and flick between them to get, uh, uh, get your readings from either GPS or total station. So once I'm happy I'm got the right instrument in, green tick, it'll automatically drive me to my connections menu uh, and try to connect to the Bluetooth on my RC5. And I can change to optical and that will drive me to it. I hope this has been a help and thanks for listening.